Hey guys, I hope you had a great week. So now we are 9 weeks in this particular series which is kind of shocking to me. Nevertheless, I have some pretty intriguing news to discuss on this fine Monday. Also, before I go on with this week's Zelda video, yes, I'll be giving my own thoughts on the new Nintendo 3DS. I have been getting tons of messages to give my own take on the semi-new console, but I will discuss that matter around the later portions of this video. But without getting too off topic, let's talk about some Zelda news. In a recent interview with Edge Magazine, Zelda Wii U producer I.G. Anuma clarified some misconceptions about Zelda Wii U and gave some key facts. One detail that Anuma mentioned is a fan reaction speculation on whether or not Link was a girl. Here is the quote. This reaction from fans is something I would like to take into consideration as we proceed with development, although that doesn't mean we are going to change the main character to a girl. Now, this quote is interesting to say the least. Personally, I find the most interesting aspect of this quote is when Anuma said he would take fan reaction into consideration in development. So what does that indicate? Well, it implies that Zelda Wii U is still very much in heavy development, which should not be so much of a surprise. Development team number 3 did just come back from developing Link Between Worlds and Wind Waker HD along with Zelda Wii U, and considering past statements of a possible Zelda 3DS game would definitely indicate that Anuma and his team are certainly hard at work. Moving on with this interview, Anuma also gave some very captivating remarks regarding Zelda Wii U's open world game mechanic. Since we are talking about the concept of open worlds now, I like to state up front that in this new Zelda game, we don't plan to have an open world in the same way other companies have been doing in recent years. The innovation of a vast open world could in one sense be seen as a return to the roots of the series, but in returning to these roots, we are also bringing with us everything we have learned and ways the series have developed over all this time, which will help to create new and exciting gameplay possibilities. So in other words, Anuma is attempting to change public opinion of Zelda Wii U. The interview in its entirety seems to me as a public relations endeavor. But nevertheless, I can't imagine Zelda Wii U would take inspiration from the original Zelda title and apply it to today's game mechanics, along with some classical Nintendo trailblazing. In addition, Anuma also clarified a way the gamepad will be integrated into Zelda Wii U. He said that the gamepad would showcase the real map that depicts the world as it is. Using a map HUD for the gamepad should be regarded as an expected attribute. However, I do suspect that development team number 3 would take advantage of the Wii U's gyroscope. This is where I go to this article by VentureBeat. The fact of the matter is that the gamepad has a 9 axis control. To summarize what this means really quick, is that the gamepad uses a magnetic sensor to indicate its orientation. This results in more accurate movement than a traditional pointing device or a traditional gyroscope. As seen here, the space pointer uses the same technology. In this demonstration, the pointer is just on point with a laser pointer. Now, what does this indicate? Well, many Zelda fans, myself included, have pondered on speculation that the bow and arrow would predominantly be used in Zelda Wii U. After all, I can't imagine that using a bow and arrow in the game would use some sort of motion aiming device. After all, Anuma did say that he would take advantage of the gamepad. Perhaps the bow and arrow would be more emphasized in Zelda Wii U. Perhaps the subtitle of the game would even reference the bow and arrow. Speaking more in depth regarding the gamepad, I can also see similar features from Wind Waker HD would also be making an appearance. An item storage system using the gamepad would be another logical choice as well. However, I do want to tie in a passage from Anuma's quote from earlier. When Anuma said that he would take in fan reaction when developing Zelda Wii U, that implied that the game is still in heavy development. If the game is still in heavy development, then that would indicate the possibility that Zelda Wii U may be delayed to 2016. Many argue that this would be the case since 2016 is the 30th anniversary of the Zelda series. However, I still hold steadfast to the 2015 release. Please note that I'm not saying this because of anticipation but due to logical inferences. If we look at Nintendo's current marketing strategy, something has to be released in 2015 to captivate consumers. And considering that Smash Brothers and Mario Kart 8 has given the Wii U sales the necessary jumpstart, another game has to keep the drive forward. However, that isn't to say that no new Zelda games won't be released in 2016. I actually find it likely that a new 3DS game or an HD remake would be released in 2016 to commemorate that event. 
So what do you guys think? What do you think will happen in 2016 during the 30th anniversary of the Zelda series? One prediction is an HD remake of Twilight Princess. After all, Anuma was considering it. However, if a Twilight Princess remake was to be released, another studio would have to develop it. However, there is another factor I want to consider and it's Shigeru Miyamoto. Miyamoto is currently leading several new projects over at Nintendo. Needless to say, there has been speculation on whether or not the true next-gen Mario game for the Wii U will be revealed soon. The reason why I'm bringing this up is to take into consideration Nintendo's marketing strategy to accommodate a true next-gen Mario game. However, to tell you the truth, Nintendo's marketing strategy is becoming more and more strange. Ever since the reveal of the new Nintendo 3DS, I have been a bit jarred. Personally, I'm not mad or disappointed of the reveal, however, that is mainly because I got into 3DS gaming kind of late. In fact, how I got into 3DS gaming was when I bought a Nintendo 2DS, which I got for about $70. However, I am perplexed by Nintendo's move here. The new Nintendo 3DS is a semi-new handheld, or some games such as Xenoblade Chronicles is exclusive for the handheld. In all honesty, I don't know where Nintendo is going with this strategy by splitting up the 3DS market. However, in all likelihood, I'm probably going to buy it since I am somewhat new to 3DS gaming. However, I do know that there are people out there that have invested a lot of time and money on the 3DS and are mad that Nintendo is taking these steps. In all fairness, I like the new designs of the handheld, but some of Nintendo's actions really do confuse me. Perhaps a new Zelda 3DS game would be on the new Nintendo 3DS, who knows. What I'm wondering is how Nintendo will market the confusion of the name new Nintendo 3DS, opposed to the regular 3DS and avoid consumer confusion. Kind of similar with the confusion of the names between the Wii and the Wii U. Moving on to a Hyrule Warriors update, there has been speculation on whether or not characters will be a part of DLC packs. Considering that Tecmo Koei is already prepping for DLC content, it is a likely possibility. Also, one thing that really got me excited, however, is Link being a player DLC character in Mario Kart 8. In fact, a friend of mine, Cookie, from the podcast was speculating that this could in fact happen and it turns out he was right. Personally, I honestly can't wait for the DLC to come out. The DLC packs are noted to be released in November 2014. Now, that's all information I have to say this time around. If you enjoyed this video, then you are in for a treat. Remember when I was talking about Miyamoto leading multiple Nintendo projects? Well, I have a hunch that he's directing over a Metroid 3DS project. Click here to see that topic being discussed in my Metroid Wii U news video. Or if you want a better understanding of the logistical side of a Majora's Mask remake, then look no further. Watch my Majora's Mask remake video where I give a really in-depth analysis regarding it. That being said, special thanks goes to Mr. Who995, Lincoln Yellow, I less than 3 2 Jizz 5531, and Chozo DNM emissary for contributing to this week's episode. If you have any information regarding anything Zelda related, please comment below with the source and I will feature your name in next week's video. Coming next week. In next week's video coming next Monday, I'll be giving my own retrospective on the Legend of Zelda series and my own personal memories regarding it. Episode 10 will be out September 8th next Monday. Also, I have been thinking about doing a new series about Mario, so what do you guys think? Should I do it? That being said, if you enjoy Super Smash Bros, The Destroyer of Worlds Neon can't, or conversations that can go everywhere under the sun, and then please check out our weekly podcast series, The All Night Cast, where we feature other YouTube channels. In this Wednesday's podcast, we will feature recurring guest Furious Francis from PlayerEssence.com. Click here to see the recent podcast featuring legendary Let's Player Hydrogen Lillipup. I think I pronounced it right. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, then please subscribe. I'll be doing a very special giveaway rather soon once the channel reaches 10,000 subscribers. Please like, favor and subscribe if you're new. Till then, this is the video of the day. Hi, I'm Reggie Fisame. I was challenged many times for the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Um, we decided to accept it with a twist. We challenged all of the NOA employees, the Nintendo of America employees, to make donations for this worthy cause. And if they made the donation, they got a raffle ticket, and had an opportunity to dunk myself as well as members of our Nintendo of America management team. So that's how we're executing the Ice Bucket Challenge. Let's do this. Three, two, one.
Garcia. Give me, Give me cookies. 